Okay, our next topic is going to be meningitis. And the meningitis patient is going to present with a headache, lethargy, vomiting, and a stiff neck. If you see a patient with headache, lethargy, vomiting, and stiff neck, you're going to think meningitis. Now, if the meningitis patient comes in with petechiae, this is a board hit, and I want you to think Neisseria as the cause, okay? The only time you get these symptoms, headache, lethargy, vomiting, and a stiff neck with petechiae, that's when Neisseria is going to be your cause. Now, meningitis is going to be broken down into three different types. It's going to be fungal meningitis, bacterial meningitis, and viral meningitis. What's the thing I want you to look for first when you're looking at meningitis? I want you to look at the glucose actually first. Why? Because if the glucose is normal, viral meningitis is your cause. And what's your most common cause of viral meningitis? Echovirus, okay? So the first thing I want you to look at when you come in with, patient comes in with headache, lethargy, vomiting, and stiff neck, or glucose. If it's normal, viral meningitis. And if it's decreased, you're down between bacterial and fungal meningitis. Now, it's pretty easy to distinguish these two based on the history. And fungal meningitis on the exam is going to present um, a patient with high-risk behavior such as IV drug abuse or promiscuity. This is when you're going to think fungal meningitis and cryptococcal meningitis is going to be the cause of the fungal meningitis. Also, cryptococcal meningitis, what's unique is that it has a characteristically low WBC count with lymphocyte predominant. And even though bacterial meningitis also has a low glucose level, they're going to have a polymorphonuclear leukocytosis. And they're not going to have this high-risk behavior such as IV drug abuse or promiscuity as fungal meningitis is going to have. So this is really, this is really easy to distinguish these two, usually based on history. And our most common cause of bacterial meningitis is strep pneumo. So most common cause, fungal, cryptococcal meningitis, stained with India ink, bacterial meningitis, strep pneumo, and viral meningitis, echo virus. How are we going to diagnose meningitis patients? We're going to do a lumbar puncture first and we do not wait for the results of the lumbar puncture to treat the patient. We must treat these patients based on clinical suspicion empirically. What's the only time we're not doing a lumbar puncture first is when the patient comes in with an increased intracranial pressure. How is that going to present on your exam? Patient comes in with headache, lethargy, vomiting, and a stiff neck, along with papilledema. Papilledema shows us what? Increased intracranial pressure. And what are we going to do first? We're going to do a CT before we do a lumbar puncture in incre intracran in increased intracranial pressure. But once again, we're not going to wait for the results of that CT before we treat them. We're going to treat them based on clinical suspicion, and we're going to treat them empirically. Now, the treatment's based on the risk factors or the presentation, obviously, right? So if it's fungal meningitis, we're going to treat them with amphotericin and flucytosine. And if it's bacterial meningitis, based on the bacteria, we're going to treat them with ceftriaxone and vancomycin if it's strep pneumo, which are, is our most common cause, actually. If it's Neisseria meningitidis, we're going to actually treat them with ampicillin or a third-generation cephalosporin for Neisseria meningitidis. Listeria, we treat with ampicillin. And GBS in our newborn, we're actually going to treat with ampicillin as well. Now, in fungal meningitis, if there is improvement after induction of therapy with amphotericin B and flucytosine, we can discontinue this and we can start fluconazole. If the patient presents with a severe headache, altered sensorium, and a blurred vision, they may, may need repeat lumbar punctures to relieve the pressure. So, you got a patient that comes in with high risk behavior such as promiscuity, IV drug abuse, thinking cryptococcal meningitis. We are treating them with amphotericin and flucytosine, and we see them with severe headache, altered sensorium, and blurred vision. We're going to repeat lumbar puncture to, re uh, to relieve the pressure. Bacterial meningitis, you want to do respiratory isolation and prophylaxis of all close contacts with Cipro and Rifampin. Rifampin is what you're going to see on the test, but you may see Cipro, okay? And if it's recurrent bacterial meningitis, I want you to test for terminal complement deficiency, another very high yield point in the test. Viral meningitis is, is easy. The treatment is just symptomatic. You're going to give acetaminophen to reduce the fever, and you're going to give a lot of fluids, and you're going to see it just like that on the test. And if the patient's unstable, you need to put them in this critical care unit and uh, protect their airway, do neurological checks, and prevention of secondary complications.